long live the king. What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes on the day another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos y'all want me to talk about tomorrow? All right, gang, gang, it's Wednesday. Let's just jump right into it with the biggest news drop that we probably have heard for this week. Chugga Conroy is officially back. That's right. You guys probably recognize that name because about three months ago, I was absolutely freaking distraught. Chugga Conroy was a YouTuber uh, who basically made Let's Plays. He was one of the reasons why I started YouTube in the first place. Without him, there would be literally no me. I don't think so. But he found himself in some <laughs> weird fiasco between him and this person named Lady Emily, where he was basically talking to her in the DMs, and he was basically getting canceled because he was being a little bit creepy in the DMs by talking about feet. <laughs> and people kept swept this thing under the rug about having this foot fetish, and Lady Emily basically came out and said, hey, he's not really that good of a guy. Here are some DMs of him basically wanting to do foot role play with me. So that happened. A girl that was in his friend group named Masse came out and said that, yes, also, he was a little bit too close with me as well and he was being a little bit kind of creepy romantically as well more on that later and then someone else came out with some chat logs from like 15 years ago where he was basically role playing with some girl come to find out uh he learned later that she was 14 and he was 18 and people were like he's cooked and that called him a people it was terrible and it was one of the worst stories that i had to cover because i felt like the consistency of the whole thing just made me not feel so good i felt like something was just off we've talked about way worse people on this channel all of the time but the problem was that all of his close circles and friends seem to have just been like distancing themselves from him and basically corroborating saying that he's not that great of a person and that's the part that made it feel like well dang i guess gang gang really did some things maybe some more things that people don't know about until today chugga conroy after three months official return and said hey everybody google doc link or keep reading here and it's a very very long uh stream of text of him talking about several things talking about as an introduction which i will read to you talking about my say uh which was a person of interest in this lady emily lady emily being the woman who came out and leaked the discord chats about him role playing there was a person here named lolly this is the person that was in the chat logs like 15 years ago <laughs> a long time ago he then talks about himself at 19 he talks about the fact that he had to go visit the mental ward how he's been and what he's going to be doing moving forward so i can't read all of this to you guys actually in fact, yesterday I sat down with both the YouTube gang and the Twitch gang. That's right. We had a live stream where we basically read the entirety of the situation. There were times where we basically kind of fell off the road and started the wayside and start talking about all these other things. It was a pretty good time. I'll bet learning the actual truth about Chugga Conroy from his point of the story and his side was absolutely heartbreaking. So instead of going over this two hour, two and a half hour stream where we basically looked at this document, I'm going to give you guys a quick TLDR of what basically happen in the situation give you guys the most important things you pretty much need to know so first of all chugga conroy says hey everybody it has been a long time since i last shared anything with you but i now feel ready to give an update on how i have been doing and clear up speculation on some incidents that have been brought up since my last message whenever something blows up online people make a lot of incorrect assumptions based on not knowing the full story and often assume the worst possible context i would like to start by clearing up these misconceptions i haven't wanted to reveal information about others but i think at this point it's best that everything is out in the open i have removed irrelevant personal information as i only want to say as much as i need to in order to set the record straight please do not bother anybody i name here i do not want others to experience what i went through i have already asked that people not harass my accusers and it's disappointing to see this ignored or respected i truly don't want anybody to be attacked over this surprise surprise people are already getting attacked over this <laughs> If a creator comes out and says, hey, please don't disturb nobody, please don't harass nobody, people will still bring out the pitchforks and just come at it. That's just Twitter online. People just looking for blood for blood. Nobody actually learns to wait, chill, wait for information. It never happens. It's always just blood first and then talk later. So I actually read this one out. This has to do with a person by name I say, a person of interest who was basically talking about this situation on Twitter and kind of like corroborating the fact that uh, Chuck Conroy was a little bit kind of off. Come to find out the fact that they might have been so kind of weird or strange to together almost like they were in a relationship at some point in time is because they were <laughs> they were actually engaged to be married my say and i dated for 10 years and we were engaged to be married it fell apart about three years ago now in every video you've ever 
never seen us together. I was her boyfriend and our friends all knew about it. You're probably wondering how this stayed a secret for so long. We both wanted our private lives to be hidden at the beginning. After the engagement, I wanted to share it, but Masse stayed firm that it remained private. She was never clear to me as to why, but I respected her wishes until it was necessary to clear this up. So the reason why this is so important because it provides much needed context to the fact as to why Chugga Conroy was kind of acting the way that he did around her because they literally were together for literally almost 10 years and people feel like like wow okay if you were going to come out to talk negatively about Chugga Conroy you probably should have brought up the fact that you guys were romantically involved for at least a decade like <laughs> you don't leave that information out especially with accusations this big he then said we loved each other I thought the world of her but we had a difficult breakup losing her was the hardest thing I'd ever gone through and I'd regret how emotional I got about it and the way I handled it that is what happened between us we both like to never hear about one another again and I sympathize with her getting bombarded about my situation after a breakup the feelings she expressed go both ways and I don't wish to be associated with her going forward in any capacity either as for her video cameo after the breakup I did that because I believed we were still friends and just taking a break from each other but once she told me she didn't want them I stopped I have strong feelings about this the way it was was said, but I am asking you nicely not to run away with speculation about her because I know what that feels like. And if you felt bad for enjoying our old videos, don't. I still look back on them fondly and personally assure you that we were happy and having fun in them. The time for that is just over now. This one I'll actually TLDR for you for real this time. There's a bunch of posts here, about four pictures for each here, where he basically brings up the context of his conversation with Lady Emily. If you guys don't know, this all started because there was a Chugga Conroy appreciation post where people were like, hey, Chugga Conroy. Conroy is a great guy. We all love him. And then Lady Emily was like, nah, <laughs> I don't think so. And just dropped some discord message. Okay. The context that he is providing about the situation is basically this. Number one, they were friends. Let's just establish that they had nothing bad had happened and they were just friends off the get go. Number two, they started getting into this whole role play thing. He asked if it was okay. If he talked about feet and shoes and role plays with her. And she said, yeah, I'm cool. That sounds good. And then participated in said role play. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, okay? Because it was absolutely freaking cringe, okay? Like... <laughs> If you guys don't know what role play online is, bless your, your your heart, your whole, your soul, okay? But people go online and start typing out their adventures and these fake scenarios and stories with people with them actually doing. Like, me pats your head or or me goes over to the corner and stay. Like, you know, okay? I'm already cringing just thinking about, like, my freaking 14-year-old self that used to do these role playing things. You either don't or you don't know. I'm cringing just thinking about it. And this right here, I'm not going to read the whole thing off, but they were basically role playing. But apparently he gave him a pair of shoes the shoes was actually the super mario boots the, the mario tims from sticker star <laughs> And they were just going back and forth doing this role play that also involved like some shoes, which was basically signed off by his girlfriend at the time. They don't care that he does this kind of thing. And it was just cringe. That's basically what it was. It's just kind of like a little weird, but not past the territory of being like sexually attacked. There was nothing sexual involved in any of this. However, about a month or two after all this stuff started, basically Lady Emily kind of ghosted him. And then basically he was kind of concerned being like, hey, are you still there what's kind of going on and that's when she communicated that she was kind of uncomfortable so they had an agreement she said that she was okay with it he asked if she was okay with it they went forward with role playing and then i guess eventually at some point in time she became uncomfortable with it in which he took a step back kind of got scared because she wasn't responding anymore and then they basically had a talk where he said that he's sorry and that he did not mean to overstep any boundaries and that he actually went to a missile institute to, to see a psychiatrist to talk about these things as well. And they handled it in private. It was a situation amongst adults where there was communication, things happened, they handled it, and then they moved forward from it. That, like, that should have been the end of it, at least, until the Jugga Conroy thing popped up, whatever, and then she decided to say, you know what? This is the perfect time to talk about how Jugga Conroy isn't that great of a guy, and let me leak out all of these DMs. I, I have, at this point, do not quite understand why she so forcefully decided to take something that was handled in private and then suddenly put it out in public directly after the post. People are saying it was clout. I can see why people would say it's clout. I still don't quite have a strong understanding as to her 
strong reason for why this needed to be exposed. If this was a situation where Chugga Conroy was going around and creeping out on everyone and being a sexual deviant and messaging all of these girls nonstop to talk about feet and not getting consent and asking all of that stuff, then sure, right, he's just predatory. He's his predatory behavior. But it seems like in any situation that he was in, he asked for permission and then he dialed it back or took it away or said sorry when someone no longer said they didn't want to consent anymore. You know, that's kind of the TLDR when it came to Lady Emily. In terms of some of the key things you need to know based on what he said here though, I want to dispel a few things about me and Emily. I didn't ask her for foot pictures constantly. I asked once if I could see a picture of her wearing the shoes I bought for her, which I honestly didn't realize would make her uncomfortable. I've gone through our logs and could find no evidence of that claim that I was constantly asking or that it was of her bare feet. I don't think that this is a fair summary of our chats. This is a very, very nice and respectful way of Chugga Conroy saying this did not happen happened, that was a lie. Another part that was pretty upsetting was the fact that apparently Lady Emily included personal details about Chugga Conroy's now awesome great girlfriend, by the way, throughout this entire fiasco. Okay, Chugga Conroy's girlfriend has just basically been standing on business and supporting this guy through and through like crazy. Like she is an absolute real one and a keeper, just literally being there for him in every aspect that you can think about. He said, my girlfriend wanted to add that Emily's decision to include personal information about her was greatly upsetting to her. Emily needlessly published the territory my girlfriend lives in. This was not public knowledge and did nothing to prove any point. And Emily screenshots, I'm open about having a girlfriend and told her my SO was fine with all of this. Our relationship had no bearing on any of this and never needed to be brought up. And finally wrapping up the Emily situation where he said, I don't retract any apology about hurting her or pestering her for a reply. Nothing I've said changes that I did that. I just felt that this was important context that was left out. This is what I was working with and why I was so comfortable doing this. I kept asking if it was okay. I kept doing it because she said she enjoyed it. I wanted to be open with someone I cared about rather than just assume and gave her my word that I wouldn't go into sexual territory for myself. It still wasn't a good way to act. I just hope it's understandable how I could think this way. So he talks in a way this entire time where it seems like it was unreasonable of him to kind of, you know, do what he did, but he went through the proper channels and the steps to make sure that he was engaging in behavior with somebody that was comfortable with, right? So he keeps saying, I'm sorry that I did it, but he was literally <laughs> being a gentleman, if you would say. So that's the part with Lady Emily, okay? And I think the part that rubs me off the wrong way here is the fact that they had the conversation in private as adults and it seems like it got settled and then she just decided to just come out and talk about it on public for whatever reason. It it You can come to your own conclusion, but I, I don't see any good reason why to bring this out on public outside of the fact to basically to destroy him and hurt him. It, it was not some type of offense here where she was being assaulted sexually. It was not those levels of <laughs> what we talk about people actually coming about. It was nowhere near there. It does not feel like this was a an honest campaign against him. Then there's a story that has to do with this girl named Law that I'm going to kind of like kind of bypass a little bit. The TLDR of this one is that he had engaged in some conversations years, years, years ago. I think it was like at least 10 or 15 years ago when people were, you know, the back time, the old time of the internet and YouTube where there was like pedal bear. <laughs> people would say words and things and thoughts and ideas that if you said it right now, you would get canceled immediately. Okay. You would get eviscerated during those times. That's what I like to call the wild, wild west of, of our past. But there was a conversation piece where people were using to him as being a apparently a, a p-file because he was talking to a 14 year old girl while he was 18. The whole context of this entire situation is this, okay? I'm not even going to go into the chats or the details. This girl, Lolly, 14, was actually looking to find older men in order to have sex with them. <laughs> She was trying to get them to catch a case. She had a dream that she wanted to freaking just basically have underage sex. That's what she was looking for. And as soon as Chugga Conroy found out that this was happening and she found out that he was 14 and she sent something to his house that was sexual, his mom came in and said, hey, I think you need to take a step back because I, I don't think this is a good situation. And he went and responded to her and said, hey, I think I need to back off um, because... <laughs> <laughs> you're 14 and I'm 18 and I did not know that we would be going like this far. So I'm going to take a step back. I'll see you later. And then apparently they met years later at a con. Lolly found him and they started talking again. And in this conversations of them 
talking again. She was like, yeah, I was kind of out of pocket. I was out here doing these terrible things, trying to get some guy to sleep with me eventually. Couldn't find it. And he was like, hey, you got lucky that you did not get taken advantage of. Apparently, there's some guy named Blank in the entirety of all of these chats that was influencing Lolly and saying that men like it younger. So she thought that it would basically appease Chugga Conroy to say that she was younger because apparently men yeah it, it's pretty disgusting anyway at some point in time throughout this entire process they talked whether they met with the con and it seemed like things went well but i guess at some point i guess lolly and him had a falling out and lolly was basically talking about the situation i don't know but he said not to send any hate that he did value their friendship and he just had to go through these logs to prove his intent that at never at one point in time was he trying to actually get to this point where he was talking to little kids and when he found out his age he took a completely huge step back <laughs> And then even then, like, it seems like he's always being respectable and actually trying to value the friendship. The summary here about him being at 19 has to do with the fact that he went through some childhood trauma, that he does not do well when it comes to the concept of sex. He doesn't like it that much. He does has a hard time interacting with it because he had some trauma as a kid when it came to it. You guys can probably assume what that means. He talks about his situation and how that made him feel. And he also talks about kind of like his, his mental disorder and how he thinks and how he thinks, how he can realize that some how that can affect people everything with the role play and how he might make people feel uncomfortable not realizing that he's making people feel uncomfortable etc etc so saying like weird 19 year old him was the young and immature and has no reflection of who he is today whatsoever which i think we can all agree if we all took our past selves between the age of 13 and 20 <laughs> and then look at ourselves in the future, right? That is no representation of who you are, okay? I was a terrible person. I wasn't a terrible person, but I said and, and did some terrible things that I would not do now. And now when I mean terrible, I don't mean like heinous. I didn't kill a person. At least I don't remember what I did, but you know what I mean? Like we said things that was normalized in public, right? I was talking about this in chat, right? People knew that R. Kelly was dating an underage girl. People knew that R. Kelly was peeing on kids. It wasn't like, it was a fact. Like we, we knew and people were laughing. We made skits about it. We made jokes about it. That's how weird the time was. If, if it came out right now that some famous person was peeing on a kid, they would get eviscerated, like immediately. Gonzo, done. But back then people were like, ha, ha, ha. that's hilarious. The kids should have moved out of the way. <laughs> And then people just move on to the next topic. That's how wild the, the times were. Lastly, his visit to the mental ward. He talks about how he, he did not have a good time. He he kind of talks about the fact that he tried to use an internet program that people are assuming is better help. And apparently they were like, hey, sorry that happened to you. Hope you get better. And it basically dismissed him so that they can bring other people. He was getting very suicidal. He was trying to get help. His friend Tim, Nintendo Capri's son, basically took care of him and fed him and kept him away from the knives. He got admitted to a mental ward where he had to be put into a, a box, basically, of walls when it was pretty cold. He said it was the worst time, but he slowly started getting better. And now he's on medication, but the mental ward was one of the worst experiences for him. And during this entire time, too, he couldn't even spend time with his girlfriend at the time. She had to take off some vacation and leave. It was been bad. And now he also had some other things going on where he had like internal bleeding like like his body was shutting down from all of this stress that was occurring from this situation and then he talks about how he's been and what he's doing moving forward and the tldr is that he's thankful for everyone in his life that helped him to take care of him he has no anger or, or resentment towards any of the parties lady emily lolly everybody involved he still values all of the friendships that he has with them he still is very sorry for any impact that he has caused on him but he wants to basically know let people know like yeah he had no terrible intentions on this and he felt terrible having to go through these receipts of these past times of when he used to be friends with these people just to basically bring the fact to say like hey here was my intention here's the context here's the proof that i'm not some predatorial creep and that it was just a misunderstanding and also i kind of went through the steps to basically have consent with the people and i don't understand why this happened but here we are don't send anybody any kind of hate that's kind of the message he's a nice guy it's kind of weird like going through the text i thought he was like a disney pixar person right he talks with proper pronunciation 
<laughs> and he's just uh, polite. I think that's the best word I can use. He's just very polite. But going forward, he's been kind of distraught because he's not making YouTube videos. He doesn't know if he's going to continue to making YouTube videos or not. He's taking a step back. He's not going to cons. He may come back to content creation, but he's not in a good headspace, but he's in a way better headspace than he was when all of this happened. So he basically came out here to say, don't spread any harassment or hurt towards anyone he still you know cares about everyone that's involved in this entire incident and he's hoping that this is something that can ramp things up and that ladies and gentlemen is the chugga conroy tldr a lot of people feel like this is another type of situation that uh, people don't like the comparisons pro jared quite and stuff where he never actually had the time to come out with his side and the reason why it looks so bad for him is because so many people in his close circle of friends distanced themselves from him they made tweets saying we will no longer be associated with him we're going to take him out of here we're going to do this it was really bad and this added context makes a lot of things make more sense i wish it didn't take three months but understandably so what he went through was so tragic then yeah i get it he could not handle it he was messy mans was going through mental issues depression bipolar psychotic episodes internal bleeding <laughs> he was trying to freaking survive this like he was dying essentially and if he wasn't dying he was thinking about killing himself it was a terrible situation for him to be in he's brought in the extra context and i'm literally hoping that this is the end of it if 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 emily has some more to say like hey by the way here's some more receipts he didn't provide i don't know i'll let you guys know i think this is now in a situation where hopefully this is the end maybe we'll hear more about emily but i feel like this entire situation he he, he got treated pretty dirty he i think he got got and i don't understand why all this information had to come public it, it just it kind of goes to show you like this is something where as adults and even as friends if these people really cared about him at any point in time in his life they would have just sat down, talked to him, had the conversation, and it seemed like he was a willing participant in this to be like, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I overstepped. I won't do it again. And then he just doesn't do it again, like 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 normal people. But Emily felt like she had to come out public with this. And then people decided to keep adding more and more slander to this. And then his friends felt like they had to come out to public. And then Ah, it's it's a terrible situation and it, it breaks my freaking heart because again i keep saying this on over and over like i have a lot of respect and love for chugga conroy this was one of the worst stories that i've had to cover in my tenure of covering stories here because of how important this person was for me and i and as non-biased as i've stayed in this entire situation saying wait for all sides wait for all sides looking at the facts and just kind of waiting and just being like man it doesn't seem like it's good for chugga conroy it broke my heart so it makes me feel better now to see that the added context is here and hopefully this can bring in some end and some resolution and maybe i know i, I know this sounds kind of naive of me but some potential good ending i i always want to figure out like after these kind of things happen how do we turn something that terrible happened a tragic event to a helpful good event and i'm just hoping that at the end of this if chicka conroy comes up that his health improves his, his mental improves and he gets the support that he needs and he, he goes and he marries his girlfriend because she's absolutely freaking amazing so that's the chugga conroy situation in a nutshell you guys can let me know how you feel about the whole fiasco in the comments below i know a lot of you have a lot of mixed feelings about the situation but again no pitchforks okay towards anybody he's asking he's asking no pitchforks okay don't go do it on his behalf it would make him feel worse but yeah, I feel like my man's got God. He didn't deserve all of this. Uh, I've seen worse, way worse, 10 times worse, diddy worse. This was not something that should have happened to him. And I just feel really bad that this was the outcome. In other news, the Nintendo showcase was today. Okay. I have actually already watched it earlier this morning on, on twitch.tv slash Inferno Omni. On the mango said, Silk Song finally announced. If you guys don't know this... <laughs> <laughs> the Nindy Showcase was this morning. It was 20 minutes at 10 o'clock uh, a.m. Eastern, and they showed 20 minutes of of uh, some some cool games. The, the, the only one, I, I mean, it wasn't a lot to announce, to be honest. It's not like big news. The coolest one that I think I liked was two of them was Little Kitty, Big City. It's a game where you go around in the city and you do cat stuff, and you mess people's lives up, and you just have fun. It looks kind of cute. And there was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, Megalovania, Metroidvania or something, basically. It's kind of like Hades, but with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which looked pretty good. And then, you know, and then eventually at the end of it, we're hoping to get some uh, Silk Song, the, the sequel to Hollow Knight, because they've been kind of been getting raided from all around the world. And I'm 
just show you this clip. We've got time for one last announcement before we run out of steam. Take a look. Steam? Get ready to sail the spectacular seas in this long-awaited Steam World sequel. The waters of the world have turned- Quick need to know when this is actually peak, okay? Yoshi said, Keanu Reeves is Shadow the Hedgehog. That's right, for the new movie, Sonic 3, we are getting Shadow and people have been wondering who is going to be the voice actor and lo and behold, it's been confirmed that Keanu Reeves aka neo aka young john wick aka the gang gang the most loved man in the entire world is going to be out here on the skates being like mm, faker yeah <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, all Keanu Reeves needs to do is use his John Wick voice and, and we got Shadow. This is a perfect match made in heaven. Everyone is going to watch Sonic 3. Also, if you guys don't know Sonic 3 when it comes to Dr. Robotnik, Jim Carrey will be starring. He will be in there. I think he's going to be a secondary antagonist, but apparently his life is ruined from everything that's been happening. So we're probably going to get big old circular fat Dr. Robotnik, Jim Carrey style. <laughs> So you guys can look forward to that evolution. Also at Movie News, Rib Guys said this, One Punch Man is coming out. There's going to be a live action. It's going to be starring me. <laughs> That's right. I am the Black Saitama. Rick and Morty writers Dan Harmon and Heather Ann Campbell are now writing the script. Justin Lin is set to direct. We are getting a One Punch Man live action freaking movie. I... This is going to be incredibly peak or incredibly terrible. It's, it's, it's either always a super huge hit or a super huge miss. No in between. We shall see. I hope it's good because I love One Punch Man. I've cosplayed One Punch Man. I've cosplayed my two favorite cosplays is Law and I've done Saitama already. So I'm hoping that this will be peak because, you know, and if they need a One Punch Man, they can hit me up. They, they're not going to hit me up, though, because the, but, you know, but still. I forgot to mention this, by the way. I mean, <laughs> Studio said, even though it's been a week, Talk about O.J. Simpson's death at 76. Um, so yeah, the, the the juice man himself, O.J., he died last week uh, from cancer at the age of 76. All right, and that's it. I didn't, <laughs> is there anything left to talk about? Like, he, he, the dude's dead. I don't think anybody cares anymore, right? The question is, did he do it? I think the answer is probably... And now we move on. I don't know. I, I feel like it's one of those things. It's a big deal that he died. But at the same time, I'm just like, I already just don't care. I'm not trying to be like, you know, like mean spirited. But like, it's I honestly, I don't really care. Also, I would like to make an apology and a correctment to all Hatsune Miku fans out there. On the last video on Monday, we talked about the Hatsune Miku concerts and how they've been garbage doo-doo butter. They keep bringing out a TV of her for you guys to watch a 2D version of her instead of the holographic one you should be getting. And people have been disappointed that they've been traveling to Coachella and MikuCon to go watch their beloved Vocaloid. She's not a VTuber. <laughs> <laughs> I just say VTuber because it just all falls within the realm, but she's a Vocaloid. It's, it's, it's a complete difference. So this is me making that correction because a lot of you guys were jumping down my throat and laughing at me. You guys know how it works here. It's all on purpose. Every now and then we talk about the news and I make one big mistake on purpose just so I can like comment rage bait you guys. Omni, did you, you're wrong about that. I, I always got to slip in a little bit of it, okay? Just to get the engagement to come up, okay? I, I know everything. I'm always right. It's just sometimes I'm intentional wrong just so I can so you know I I knew but I just wanted to make sure that you guys would catch me on that okay so now that we have that all you know understood and everything we're, we're good to go we can move forward bad news for you guys at home if you have an ad blocker okay apparently YouTube is about to go in even harder if you are dodging YouTube premium and you're doing your best to not watch ads to on YouTube they are going in harder and making it hard for you to not use ad blocker blob saying YouTube is cracking down harder on ad blocks YouTube has announced a crackdown on third-party apps that block ads on videos. What do you mean by this and which apps are those? This article by Dexardo saying, for almost a year, YouTube has been cracking down on people using browser plugins to bypass ads on videos uploaded to the site. YouTube Premium offers users ad-free viewing across all platforms as well as access to a Spotify as streaming services for podcasts and music. The company is doing so as a way to try to get more subscribers to his YouTube Premium subscription and has continued to increase the ways they're cracking down on ad blockers. Now, I will say 
I'm not saying that I'm not an advocate of ad blocking. I mean, if nobody used ad blocking, then as a YouTuber, I make more ad revenue, right? But if you guys want to, you're entitled to your third party, fine. I don't care. I use it for stuff all the time, right? But I do know that when it comes to YouTube premium, I like the fact that like I can like minimize the video. I can move it over to the left. I can cut my phone off and put it in my pocket and keep listening to it. Whereas without YouTube premium, I feel like it should be a function in itself, <laughs> of YouTube, the actual app where you can like watch videos or listen to videos in the background of your phone, but they only put that behind a paywall. I kind of like that about it, but I understand why people don't pay for it because there's a subscription service for everything now. Like eventually they're going to make a subscription service for you to freaking breathe, right? Oh, you want to breathe some of that oxygen? <laughs> for $4.99, you cannot die. <laughs> I feel like that's what the world is turning into. Anyway, YouTube made a post revealing that they're strengthening the enforcement on third-party apps that lets you view YouTube without ads. Quote, viewers who are using these third-party apps may experience buffering issues or see the error. The following content is not available on this app when trying to watch a video. It reads, quote, we want to emphasize that our terms don't allow third-party apps to turn off ads because that prevents the creator from being rewarded for viewership and ads on YouTube help support creators and let billions of people around the world use the streaming service. YouTube Revance is a very popular third-party app that allows users to watch videos on the site without ads, but the developers haven't commented on the change or how it's going to affect the app in the future. I'm also kind of curious too as well as like, you know how like Nintendo like basically goes in on like people who pirate their games and all these emulators? like YouTube. I'm surprised that YouTube and Google don't actually just literally murder or murk some of these developers that are making some of these... <laughs> <laughs> these ad blocks, right? They're a giant as well. They, they might have it in their right to do so. I don't know if it's illegal or not. Probably not. But yeah, in case you guys are wondering why your stuff is running slower, it's probably because YouTube is, is, is setting it up for it to do so. Quick, you really need to know because I have to give a special congratulations to my gang gang, my homie of a long time, like Thero. Not only releasing the silver campaign, but hitting 1 million subscribers. Okay, this has been the homie for years and years. I love this man. Man, like <laughs> been watching his content for years and we've talked about him on the show a few times so I can get you guys sip on him but he makes absolute peak funny hilarious content here he is saying number one baby insane achievement for a two-hour video the silver campaign hitting two million and being his best video in the past five days one of the top ones that he's actually created over all of his Dragon Ball fighter stuff which is the ones that I'm usually hip to as well as really really highly edited he spends hours, days making these videos, and they're very, very well made and absolutely hilarious at the same time. On top of that, he's finally reached 1 million subscribers with a clean 500 videos, man. He's been doing this thing for a long time. He <laughs> he basically makes content as if he has like tens of millions of subscribers, okay, when it comes to his views. So him hitting 1 million should have been something that should have happened a long time ago. So I'm very happy for Gang Gang. So this is a appreciation, the Thero appreciation, man. I'm very proud of you. Congratulations on your success. Hopefully one day I will join you and get that 1 million plaque. I'll be my working my way up there with you. All right. All right. All right so I was going to do a one off video talking about this. Okay. But I'm going to save it for today's video. This might have been the worst take I have ever seen on Twitter in so long. It was so bad. How bad was it that literally everyone and their mom had to wait on it? And it has to do with my guy, MKBHD, Marcus Brownlee, the gang gang himself, the tech reviewer, the geek. I can't think of something Rob's reviewer, but yeah, you know the guy. He reviews things, Apple products, Google products. He lets you know if you should buy or not, if it's good or bad, the pros, the cons, and yeah, that's basically what he does. And he's amassed almost 20 million subscribers doing so after doing so for years and years. One of the OGs of YouTube and one of the best to do it, kind of like up there with like Linus Tech Tip. The tweet you guys that showed me was MKBHD bankrupted a company in 41 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> a slight criticism from a big YouTuber, let alone calling the product horrendous, is enough to make a company go bust. Creators are so much more powerful in 24 than you think. This clip will be the gravestone for Humane. Now, Humane is basically the name of the product that Marquise Brownlee, MKBHD, was reviewing it. And he absolutely did not like it. I was going to say hate it, but my man was going on on it. He's like, yeah, this product right here, mm -mm, not good whatsoever. All right. So this is the Humane AI pin. It is a brand new product and a really, really interesting form factor of an ultra futuristic wearable 
computer. So in a time of all these crazy gadgets and Vision Pro and wearable glasses, it's so sick that we get so many genuinely new first generation products like this to give a shot. Unfortunately, it's also the new worst product I think I've ever reviewed it's in its current state. There's just so many things bad about it. It's so bad, in fact, that I think it's actually kind of distracting to like understand what the point of the device is. God dang, that's it. If, if, if the thing is, is like Marquise Brownlee, is, he's actually kind of similar to Keith Lee. Keith Lee, who reverse food, okay? If Keith Lee comes to your restaurant and says, this stuff is garbage, doo-doo, butter, pack it up, you're done. <laughs> Ain't nobody coming to your restaurant ever again. You might as well file for bankruptcy. If Keith Lee says 10 out of 10, I had this food, delicious. Everything that I eat here was great. Everyone was immaculate. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, this food is good. Then you are going to be successful. You're going to replace Red Lobster. Red Lobster who went out of business, you will become the new Red Lobster. That's how much power Keith Lee has. It applies to Marquise Brown Lee. He's been doing this for so long that people objectively want to hear his opinion. Some people don't want to figure things out like me. I don't want to figure out if a new MacBook is worth buying or not. I'm not a tech guy like that, like that. I'm into tech, but not into tech tech. So I like to be like, hmm, who can I trust that isn't being bought out by these companies? that isn't you know showing favoritism that's going to let me know if this is a product that i want to buy and that person is marquise brown lee and this created a lot of controversy because here is the actual worst take of all time this guy i'm surprised he hasn't deleted the tweet congratulations for standing on business on there but he said i find it distasteful almost unethical to say this when you have 18 million subscribers hard to explain why but with great reach comes great responsibility potentially killing someone else's nascent project reeks of carelessness first do no harm this guy daniel is upset that marquise brown lee did not like a product in the video titled the worst product i've ever reviewed for now now imagine this right someone saying that you are doing harm unto a company because you don't like their product imagine saying that it's both distasteful and unethical for you to not like a product simply because you have 18 million subscribers like hello this man has built it he started from scratch from zero okay let me not get too wild let me get too wild let me relax okay hold up i mean obviously you guys are reading this and you're probably having the same energy like what in the hell fat did this man have money or stake in this business is this why he's acting like that is he making a freaking product that's also going to get reviewed by marquise brownlee and he's worried that his company's going out of business because i believe this company humane they raised like 200 plus million dollars it was a big endeavor over many many years and people feel like they dropped an incomplete terrible product and he's basically trying to warn consumers that this is not something that you should invest I had tweeted it and said, nah, MKBHD got 18 million subscribers by doing exactly what he's been doing since he had zero. Being objective, fair, and consistent. His responsibility is to himself and his audience, no one else, okay? It is not up to him to come over here and baby these companies that are making these products that are falling short. He has no responsibility. In fact, if he did do that, that would make him a terrible reviewer because then he would be biased. He wants to let the consumers, us, the people, know if it's worth the buy. And if he was just being like, eh, it's not bad. I think you guys could try it out. And then you buy it in his garbage and you waste your money. You're not going to want to watch him. You want his honest opinions. Even if you don't agree with his opinions, the fact that he is honest, the fact that he will talk smack about Apple, the fact that he will say like, yeah, this Google product actually sucks. I love Google, but this one sucks means that you can trust him to give you at least his truth, even if you don't agree with it. Anyway, Marquise Brownlee's responded and said, we disagree on what my job is. And then Daniel said, why didn't you use the same sessional title on X? This was honest. The YouTube title wasn't. <laughs> This man doesn't understand how YouTube works. These guys said, I find this post distasteful, almost ethical. Perhaps companies shouldn't release stupid garbage. And what she said, they're not forcing anyone to buy it. You can return it if you like it. The YouTube title was meant to crush them. A show of force by MKBHD. Can you imagine that? I, sometimes I get worried, right? I remember I was in this place too as well, where people were telling me I had a responsibility, like when it comes to titles or thumbnails, like, like Omni, you have to cover this because you've grown so much that you are now legally, morally, ethically responsible to cover this specific topic. And I'm like, no, I'm not. 
just because I've grown to a certain point now, I have responsibilities that I have to do that don't involve you guys. Like again, as a YouTuber, my goal here is to make content for you guys. That's it, to create content, to talk about things, have fun, joke around, commentary, laugh, laugh, keep you informed of what's happening in the world. And that's it. I have no entitlement to nobody else. I don't have to talk about anything that I don't want to talk about. It's, <laughs> but I feel like when people grow, right, people would like to insert that these people have these responsibilities that are outside of the realm of what they already created it just because they got a big bigger. And imagine telling someone that they have to change based on how they've grown. <laughs> when it's like the fact that they grow in the first place is because they were being like true to themselves. There was a lot of more comments. Philip DeFranco said, apparently MKBHD is a bad actor because he didn't sugarcoat his review of a $700 product with a monthly subscription. And a monthly subscription to it? Oh my lord. It's not on him to play interference slash PR rep for the company if V1 of their product isn't good. He has never struck me as someone excited to shit on products. That's another thing. Marquise Brownlee isn't a person who comes out here and says, hey, here's a product and it's garbage doo-doo butter. He's never been extreme. He's always been pretty fair. Like What makes him good is the fact that it seems like he's being pretty fair and objective of all his stuff. Not the type of person to just dunk for the sake of dunking. So if it looks like he's dunking, it's probably because the product is worth dunking on. It's probably that bad. My boy Charlie saying, dog shit take. Imagine a world where all reviewers have to give squeaky clean reviews to everything. The whole point is informing people on products so they can decide if it's worth buying. This one was turbo ass and he did people a favor by saving them time slash money on it. This then led to MKBHD actually giving a response on YouTube to talk about reviews online, which I will play a couple of the minutes of what he was talking about with you guys here right now. All right. I review a lot of products, right? I've, I've talked about hundreds, maybe thousands of products at this point. But as many videos as I've made about products, there are way more products out there in the world that exist. So the process of selecting which products to even review in the first place is like an art form to itself. Most products are just meh. They're fine. Like they exist, they, they get made, they're fine, whatever. So they have to, they have to reach a certain level of interest or, or being really good to even be considered for a review or sometimes really, really bad. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of interesting discourse lately on this topic. There will be, you know, some negative reviews and then a company will eventually go out of business and then the internet poses the question, do bad reviews kill companies? Do I think the answer is that bad products kill <laughs> companies, right? Because it's based on a review. If you make a good product, then more than likely you will get more good reviews than not. Sure. You'll have some bad faith actors like, I don't know, let's say Tesla comes out with their Cybertruck, right? And someone is anti-Tesla. Maybe they're shorting Tesla. Maybe they're they're, they're the, the competitor. They'll be like, boo, you suck, this is terrible. You know, you'll have a couple of those people who are basically trying to run an agenda. For the most part, when you make a good product, the internet and the people around you will respond. And there's enough people like Linus Tech Tips and MKBHD who come out here talk about reviewing this stuff to give honest feedback. If not, if their feedback was terrible, he would not be as good as he was. If he was out here pandering to Apple, to, to Microsoft, to all of these companies and, and simply just saying things that help him get paid or getting lobbied or whatever, he would not be as big as he is. This does happen, though, you know, the government in America, sure. And this is definitely a thing in certain places, but not with him. And I think a lot of people recognize that, which is why he's one of the biggest to do it. Bad reviews kill companies or do bad products Kill companies. That's what I said. Exactly. I, yeah, I, I do have a lot of thoughts. So two of the biggest examples that have been pointed to, especially on Twitter, were the Fisker Ocean review that I did and the Humane AI pin from a couple days ago. So the Fisker saga was pretty well documented, but in case you missed it, I reviewed a car, I had a pretty horrible experience with it, documented it, published their review on the Autofocus channel. And then a few months later, the entire company appears to be on life support, like likely filing for bankruptcy soon. And now this startup, Humane, you know, they dropped their first product, this pin. I review it. It's not super positive. A lot of people are saying the same thing. And I don't even think Humane is going anywhere, by the way. But I think 
there is some pretty simple logic we can use to decipher what the, the real danger is to these companies. I, again, again, we've already talked about it. The simple logic is good product, good review, bad product, bad review that comes with any kind of thing that you can consume. If you have a good TV show, it'll get good reviews. People will praise it and then it will do well. If you have a bad TV show, well... <laughs> You can be like Velma and everyone can hate it, but you'll get a hate watch kind of things. But you basically see the point. Same thing works with games. Okay. You get rewarded based on how well, very rarely do you make a good product and, in, and it gets bad reviews everywhere. Very, very rarely. It might be a little bit subjective. Maybe you think something is good, but it's garbage, right? But for the most part, consumers are smarter than what people give them credit for. People think like, oh, consumers don't know what to consume. So they just listen to people like MKBHD. But no, if someone watches a content, eats a food, plays a game, watches a movie, and they come out and they walk in out and they say, this was good, they will get feedback. They'll talk about it on Twitter. They'll talk about it with their friends. They will recommend it. It'll get good scores on Rotten Tomatoes. It's a very organic thing for consumers to basically review products on their own. He just happens to be one of the biggest to do so. So I think the answer is a little bit twofold is that A, it comes down to how good the product is, but and B, yes, people trust what he has to say, so they will listen. So his reviews do have a lot of impact. Let's say, for example, we had evil MKBHD. If he wanted to, he could come out here and say, this is the worst product ever, even though it's great, and it will probably make it tank, you know? <laughs> He does have that power if he wanted to use so. But if he did do that, if MKBHD came out here and made reviews where he said good products were bad and bad products were good, we as the internet would have sniffed that out a long time ago, a long time ago. If it was really that bad, we would be able to tell why is he telling this good product bad and why is he saying this bad product is good? He will lose credibility and that's not happening. Do you still get a bunch of negative reviews and then die as a company if the product is actually really good. But you know, let's back up for a second. What is a review? A little pet peeve of mine is I think people misuse or overuse that word a lot, but a review is just somebody uses a product and then just delivers their impressions on whether they think it's any good or not, how yeah. well it actually worked. And if their honest opinion is if it's good, then that's the review. If it's bad, that's the review. That's basically it. And so I've been an advocate of good independent reviews for what feels like forever now. But the thing about reviews is if they're not honest, then they're basically useless. I really strongly feel like everything that comes from a review, all the consequences and everything that comes around it, everything in the world of an ecosystem of reviews depends on the review being truthful and actually honest about things. Right. So let me, I'll just give an example. I've told this story before, but Years ago, I remember I reviewed the first uh, Razer phone when it came out. So Razer, gaming company, they make lots of stuff. They're getting into smartphones for the first time. So they made a phone that appeals to the same target demographic of gamers. So you know, it had a bunch of upsides and downsides, obviously gaming focused features. So it's got like front facing speakers and a high refresh rate. The battery is pretty big, but also the camera was weak. And I specifically, I remember I, the vibration motor was horrible. And I remember calling it out. I remember saying this. Also, the vibration motor in this phone, trash. Straight trash. I'm gonna call myself <laughs> so you can- Can you guys imagine me as MKBHD? Oh yeah, and the, the motor vibration on this phone, garbage doo-doo butter. <laughs> I guess to be honest, we're kind of from the same vein, right? Because when I talk about events and stuff, I give you guys my opinions on the events. And then I guess some of you guys kind of use my opinions to kind of create your own. I always tell you guys to think for yourself as well. And I'm sure he does the same thing too. He says, hey, my independent review is that I don't like it. But hey, if you do pick it up and you get something from it, then good for you kind of thing. But for me, you know, kind of thing, do your own thing. But here's what I have to think if you need somebody to rely on. It right, sounds like static. broken, like yeah. it's, but it sounded that way out the box since day one. So that is the Razer phone. Just one of the worst vibration motors I've ever experienced in a new phone. So, okay, fast forward a year, right? I'm at a briefing. It's in New York City. It's for the Razer phone 2. Hmm. And so they're walking me and some other people through this new phone they've made, and they've got a bunch of changes. It's got a glossy back. They added wireless charging now. The logo glows, and like the speakers are better and all this stuff. And they're talking us through it. And then the guy turns to me and he says, and Marquez, you got to try the new vibration motor in this phone. This man's name is Marquez? 
Oh my God. I've been calling him Marquise this entire time. Okay, my bad. My bad, bro. It's Marquez. Like Marcus. Marquez. Ah, I get it. Okay, that's pretty dope. It's like me. My name is Steven, but sometimes people call me Stefan. So, it, I mean, I don't mind either way. He probably doesn't mind either. And it's such a niche thing, but I, sure enough, I try it and it's way better. And that's, to me, what, that's a big part of what reviews are all about. Yeah. That honest feedback turned into actually action for the company to make it better. So yeah. people who bought the first one knew what they were getting into and people who bought the second one actually benefited from that. Correct. So that's number one. Honesty, obviously, is super important. But the second thing is these reviews are also definitely for the people that are watching them and consuming them. Correct. So you've probably been in the situation when you're, you're about to buy something and you just want to double check. So you, you hop on YouTube, you search it up, watch a couple of videos about the product just to make sure you're not missing anything. And then you either decide on the moment or later that day, like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to buy it. We've all been there. I, that's the reason. That's exactly how this YouTube channel started. Like my first ever tech video was reviewing a laptop, but specifically I, I bought the laptop with my allowance money in high school. And I found a Windows Media Center remote in the PCI slot that wasn't in any of the other reviews. So the first thing I decided to do was talk through it in a video so that anyone else who bought the laptop after me look at baby mkbahd that's crazy 15 years ago the young guy himself that's that's wild bro know about it so you're thinking about buying a thing you watch a couple reviews of the thing you learn everything you need to know boom success but here's where it gets a little bit interesting mm -hmm. i do have a bit of an extra dimension on my hands with these videos because i know <laughs> that there's no way that every single person watching a review of every single product is one of those people who was considering buying it. I get that comment actually in person all the time. I, you know, I watch the reviews even though I'm not buying any of this stuff. So I know that a lot of people, in fact, most people watching these videos are actually just here to watch an interesting, informative, good video in general yeah. and an entertaining video. And so the way that I satisfy those things is much more subjective, I think. Like everyone has a different way they do it. Everyone has a different target demographic, but that's a little bit of a new dimension. So then I think if we go back to the original question, so can uh, can a video be, can a video kill a company? I'll use the uh, Humane and Fisker examples specifically. The Fisker Ocean was a terrible car. Damn. It is a terrible car. I've reviewed about... <laughs> I like how he's standing on business. He's not sugarcoating. He's like, look, I said it was a terrible car. It still is a terrible car. Are you worried about me being too harsh on these companies? Well, that's too bad because I still think this car is terrible and I would not recommend you buy it. And maybe a week or two later, the company's stock price is plummeting to an all time. Yo, you're telling me that MKBHD gave a review of this terrible car and then the stock price plummeted 98%. <laughs> oh my God. God, what was that situation that happened with that VTuber? What's her name? Dogi. When she got graduated from Niji Sanji and their, their stock, I think, plummeted maybe like, I'd say 10%, maybe 15. My man helped a company <laughs> almost 100% of his stock. That's 100%. That's basically 100%. That's GG's. That's, that's 100 to zero after the review. Low, and they appear to be like filing for bankruptcy. Cue the internet going nuts, which... I guess, I guess I get it. Like, obviously it makes a nice headline. Like, oh, this, this review came out and it killed this company. This review bankrupted all of Fisker, maybe. Like there was a whole morning brew thread on how Fisker handled this video so poorly that they're now gonna go bankrupt because of it. Also, there were, there were whole stock investment themed channels saying this was like a paid promoted attack against the Fisker stock price. Like it got pretty crazy. But did one review kill the entire company. I would say to zoom out a bit, I would really, I think it's important to zoom out a bit actually. First of all, I was not the only one to review the car, not even close. And so yes, the stock price did drop after my video, but the stock was in free fall for many, many months before my video. So it was already in free fall. It was already about to go drop. People were already reviewing it and it was saying it bad. It just so happened that like he comes out later and says, Oh yeah, I agree with all these other honest reviews that it's just not a good product and that's when it tanked. So it was already on the way down. 
Marquise Brown Lee just said, long live the king. And it... <laughs> And finally, Fisker took that huge tumble that it seemed like inevitably was going to happen because the product was so bad. So let's fast forward to the end. Let's see what his summary is. Now, you could argue, and I think the, the guy on Twitter did, that uh, the packaging was too clickbaity. And I totally get that. But I also stand by our title and thumbnail and especially the end of the title. But keep in mind the dimension that that most of the people who, who see this in their feed and their subscription box have never heard of the Humane AI pin, and this will be the first time they hear about it, and they click on it, hopefully, and then they're delivered with a thoughtful, well-considered, balanced, and honest, and entertaining, and informative video that happens to be a review. I have a massive amount of respect and appreciation for people and groups of people who are actually making new stuff, like building products. That's the hard part at the end of the day, and we get to get a whole bunch of new exciting things that might change the world, and that's really exciting. But my reviews, technically, are not for them. All that any honest review actually does is just accelerate whatever was already going on. It's basically a reflection of the product. It's just simply like when you think about the chicken and the egg, which one came first? The product came first. The review comes second. And if the product, as I continue to say and over and over, is good, then you will probably be followed up with more good reviews. That's just how it works. You would need an incredibly large amount of negative players, bad faithful players out here to bomb a good product in order for your company to, to, to not succeed. If you made something that was a nine out of 10 and then you got a bunch of MKBHDs giving it a three out of 10, it still take a lot of people to do that. And then even then it would be suspicious because there will be consumers who've already been consuming this, giving their reviews and be like, I don't understand why people are saying this is bad when it actually seems pretty amazing because that's how it works. Consumers are not that stupid that they will just listen to reviewers for whatever reason. And if, if MKBHD was not giving honest reviews at the end of the day and not being truthful, he would have been called out on it a long time ago. So yeah, guys, it's the MKBHD in a nutshell. It's so fun talking about uh, Mar Mar Marquez <laughs> Brownlee because I've been watching his content for years and watching him grow is pretty cool. And it's, it's just always wild to see when these YouTubers, we do get to a certain point, right? When you get so big, then suddenly the, the normies and everyone on their outside world are like, hey, bro, I can't believe you gave this bad review, man. Do you not realize the responsibility that you have in these freaking NPCs, yada, yada, yada. But we know as both consumers of YouTube and watching YouTubers and being a part of this space, what it means to, to be a YouTuber. We understand that our responsibility is always to just you guys and ourselves. I'm here because I, I like entertaining you guys and you're here because you like to be entertained. And we have this. This is our circle. So when people come out the bubble to kind of poke in at our circle, we're just like, nah, bro, this is stay out of it. Okay. Maybe our circle did get bigger and bigger and bigger, but you're on the outside looking in and you don't know anything about us gang gang. So stay out. So let me know how you guys feel about the situation. That's how I feel about it. He ain't do nothing wrong. I hope he gives more bad reviews. I, I want him to go out, find the worst products and then say that it's garbage doo doo butter. MKBHD, please. The worst thing, the next product that you find, please just say it's garbage doo-doo butter with those exact words or take mine's, okay? <laughs> you can take my words and put it into it and I'll let you know. You can say, incur the words of Omni, it is garbage doo-doo butter. Please dunk on these bad products more so we can save consumers from wasting money, all right? Because we don't got enough as it is, all right? Economy is ridiculous. Inflation is wild. No one's owning homes. It's hard on these streets. We need somebody like him, the freaking Batman of the review world, the tech reviewer, protecting our pockets from, from terrible products, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but all right, guys, that's all I have for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed the nice big chunky wongy. I'll catch you on another episode later, probably on Friday. And again, I'm, I say this every week. I'm trying to push through to make more content for you guys. I just need to kind of just, just, just chuck through it. It's basically, I just kind of just want to literally just come up here for another video. I'm thinking about starting a subreddit. You know what? Screw it. I'll do it in this video, right? In this video right here, if you made it to the end, I'm going to drop my subreddit. 
And on that subreddit, I'm going to get you guys to come up there and submit whatever you want. TikToks, stories, if there's anything in there that you guys think is interesting enough to make for a topic for a conversation, drop it in the subreddit and I'll be reviewing that subreddit. So whenever there are days where I just want to make content, but I don't know what to talk about, I'll go in there and I'll fish in there and I'll see if I can find something. Okay. Go over there, subscribe on there. It's, obviously it's free and just post whatever you want. This is for all the people who don't have Twitter as well, because a lot of you guys want to contribute, but you don't want to be in the cesspool that is Twitter. I completely freaking understand. Okay. So if you want, go to the subreddit, just find something interesting, drop it there and I'll review from there as well. And hopefully we can grow that to make that bigger. So then if we make that bigger, then we can make more content. And then, you know, it's the circle of life. I love you guys. Y'all take it easy. Y'all have a good rest of your day, evening, night, and yeah, be good. Brush your teeth. Peace.